Collaborative Arts. Collaborative Arts meaning artists who work in collaboration with communities of place or interest in the ideation and execution and delivery of art projects. Um, and so I like to spend a lot of time with uh, groups of people uh, as part of my research and kind of engage with those communities as much as possible. This is a project called uh, I'm Astonished Wall That You Haven't Collapsed Into Ruins and it was a series of exhibitions um, where uh, I did a lot of research with survivalist groups and uh, doomsday preppers, some of you might know about that phrase. So I learned a lot about how to build fires and make camps, but also things like how to tin food and how to store it for long periods of time, how to uh, beekeep, uh, how to make alcohol from scratch. Um, this is a world building exercise, uh, essentially, where I create these uh, immersive interactive spaces. Um, this one is kind of post-apocalyptic in nature, uh, the idea that at some point in the future there's a dramatic reduction of the world's population, and the people who are left have an abundance of resources, but maybe not the technical know-how uh, about how to, for example, purify water. So I created these installational spaces. Uh, this is a water fountain that had an ozone generator that was pumped into this fountain of water, and it would uh, purify that water. But I had to be very careful with this because if I put a little bit too much ozone into the water, it would leak out of the water and then kill everybody. So I had to have <laughs> technicians there at all times. Uh, and then that water would then be put into water fountains, uh, like the ones you have in offices, and people would drink from that. Um, so that's, but the reason I'm showing this one uh, was because over the course of the exhibition I kind of felt a little bit disappointed that there wasn't enough engagement by the audience. People really enjoyed the space, they, they loved it, it was a really kind of successful project by a lot of those kind of <coughs> metrics you have in the art world. But it was kind of disappointing for me, I didn't feel like people were getting enough out of it. I put in performers who would have these kind of basic role play uh, instructions and uh, they would activate the space in some way. But afterwards, I just felt like it wasn't enough. Uh, and then that's when I really started getting involved in LARPing and the LARP communities here. Um, and that will lead me on to this project uh, called Alibi. Uh, this was a project uh, that existed in a few different contexts. Uh, in educational contexts, art contexts, corporate contexts. And the idea was that we create these uh, party LARPs. Uh, and it was mainly in Dublin to begin with. Uh, we'd have like, large groups of people, they'd be there for a whole day. Uh, we had a multidisciplinary arts team uh, working on it from people from different art forms. Uh, Jamie Harper was one of the members uh, of the team as well. And uh, first of all, it started off as a party type experience. And then secondly, it kind of evolved into this way of appreciating heritage. The first one was, uh, first big one was in uh, an art center, and the second one was in Dublin Castle. Um, so it was a way for people to occupy an identity and reimagine their relationship to heritage contexts, uh, as well as like imagining what the future would be like in these different types of spaces. And then what I would do, uh, it was quite impactful for a lot of people who participated. Uh, so we'd have a series of debriefs that would go on uh, a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, and then a year later I invited uh, like 12 of these participants back for a series of interviews where they would re-engage with their character uh, through this meditative process. They would embody that character again and they would be interviewed as that character talking about how, what was it like uh, participating in this uh, party uh, a year ago uh, and how do they feel about it now. And then they disengage from that character and then they'd be asked to um, speak about what it's like to be a player, having re-engaged with that character. And I'll just move on to this one very quickly. This one was a project I did during the summer with the support of POST uh, as a kind of production aid, um, and also engaged quite strongly with uh, the Belarusian LARP community. Uh, Nastasia and Yanya talked a little bit about what they did uh, as part of the residency, I invited them to to engage with this space, um, and they did some fantastic LARP experiences. This space is uh, a really interesting space in that it's filled 
floor to ceiling with all these Soviet heroes, uh, and it's a really constructed space. Uh, and there's of the thousands of statues that are that are there, there is a handful of female ones, and they're all shoved into the corner of this space. And they actually, the museum staff call it the women's corner, which is really weird. <laughs> but this was uh, like the immediate impression that I got there. Uh, I was there in residence for about a month, and. Um, uh, kind of curated a series of events, LARP events, and like one or two day exhibitions of like stuff I was doing, uh, like research projects I was undertaking. Um, one of the things I find really interesting about the Belarusian LARP community, uh, like as you can see from this space, um, it's, it's kind of loaded with this uh, patriarchal power structures. It's very visible here. And even though that's representative of a Soviet era, it also in some way translates to the contemporary political setting. Um, and yeah, so the thing that I really find fascinating about the Belarusian LARP scene, they create some really interesting and kind of intimate uh, LARP like experience, or LARPs, and in a way that's uh, kind of a political act for me, like it disengages from this reality that's, uh, that is foisted upon uh, people there. and collectively activates a shared vision that more appropriately represents their values. So it was quite an interesting space for me to work in and a group of people to work with. Um, and also, uh, as part of that, uh, I would invite people in to do a series of video portraits. And these portraits were almost like an invitation to a larger version of yourself, how you construct your own identity uh, in this heavily constructed uh, space, um, and how you respond to constructed identities and how you wish to repre represent yourself. And this was like one of a still from one of the videos. Um, yeah. This I'm just gonna go back to this. Um, as a result of working in Dublin Castle, uh, we engaged in this long period of planning um, about how we could further engage with museum staff, uh, people that engage with Dublin Castle. Dublin Castle is the center of Dublin's administration, administrative apparatus, like so policing, legal stuff, um, uh, military policing, uh, it's all based there. And in the process of making alibi, I found out what the motto of Dublin is. Never knew it, it's written in Latin, it's kind of hidden away. Um, but the direct translation in English is, an obedient citizenry produces a happy city. And, <laughs> You can imagine the heritage of that, where it came from, and how kind of uh, insulting or offensive it might be, particularly in relation to a lot of political activity that's happened in Ireland in recent years, specifically uh, uh, referenda, uh, two referendum referenda uh, that happened in Ireland recently, one on marriage equality and one on access to abortion, and that was uh, an extremely f uh, like fraught uh, process. Um, and it didn't in any way reflect a sense of obedience. Um, but on the back of that, uh, next year, uh, we'll be engaging this year-long uh, research um, process, exploring how LARP can be used as uh, a tool for breaking down hierarchies, working with museum staff, working with politicians and activists, um, and exploring how we engage with space um, and how we can utilize space using these methodologies to uh, create a greater sense of agency in political and social terms. Next up is a project called Free Market, another one that has yet to happen, and that's gonna happen in Cork next year, a research project of uh, part of this year-long uh, research uh, program where I engaged with a group of uh, people from a community of a street called North Main Street in Cork. And uh, this is kind of a dilapidated street that's kind of fallen into disrepair. And a lot of the properties are being bought up by vulture funds, mostly US vulture funds, and they're allowing these properties to dilapidate and fall into disrepair so they can uh, have an excuse to knock them down, rebuild uh, apartment complexes and uh, shopping centers. And this, uh, essentially they're pushing out the local community there. So what we're trying to do with this is uh, explore what it might be like, uh, and the plan is, uh, in collaboration with some investment bankers, cryptocurrency experts, and political activists uh, in the area, how to create uh, 
participatory budgeting system that allows people to, uh, as a community, strategically invest in the future of that space by applying a, a narrative structure that's LARP-like uh, to increase participation and a sense of uh, commitment and authority or a sense of uh, ownership over this process. And the idea ultimately is to create a long-term strategy that allows this community to buy back some of that property that's being taken. This brings me on to the last project I'll talk about. Uh, it's called Union. And this is one that uh, is currently happening <coughs> and is being done in uh, partnership with Rollisville's Fabric. And it's a grouping of artists uh, that work with LARP as a significant feature of their practice and has come through this community, this Nordic LARP community. And the idea is that we build a network and we assess the needs of artists that work in this capacity, uh, create opportunities for ourselves, uh, engender a sense of collective purpose and activate that shared vision. Um, and one of the things that's really exciting about it is that there's a, a range and diversity of uh, participants. Nina Lundvestral, she's here, she's, she's one of the artists that's involved as well. Um, and you know a lot of them, Nina Rina Essendrop, uh, Adam James, Bertie Conton, there's a bunch of them now at this point. Um, and we're coming up with strategies uh, to <coughs> deliver some of the values that are important in this community to an arts context. Um, right now, uh, the art world is extremely excited uh, about the idea of LARPing and how that can be an effective way to engage an audience. And that, not to be alarmist uh, or sensationalist, is a real threat to this community. Um, and what we want to do is kind of address that and deliver some best practice protocols um, and create a more kind of uh, a, a better relationship between the art world and the LARP world. Uh, and one where we can share and learn from each other and move forward in a way that is going to benefit us all. Mutual benefit is the key to this. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening.